We are not here to talk about surviving high school. We are here to talk about how you conquer it. I am high key very jealous of everyone watching this video right now because I would have killed to know these things when I was a teenager. Like I fully would have had the best experience in school if I knew all of the things I'm about to tell you in this video. So consider this your ultimate guide to being the perfect student, getting ahead of your peers, having the best glow up and mastering the mindset to remain powerful and confident at school every single day. I am not going to sit here and let you make the same mistakes I did, okay? I was super shy. I couldn't talk to new people or make friends. I let other people's words get to me. I believed that other people People were cooler than me in school. I know. Ew. So we are about to make sure that you become the hottest, coolest, and smartest version of yourself. Let's go. Chapter number one, self-care, aka the pre-back-to-school glow-up. This is going to be super quick, so let's run through all of the things you need to do before that first day. Let's talk beauty. Most schools don't allow makeup or you might be too young to wear it. That was my case, but I watched so many tutorials back in the day on how to work my way around this. Mastering your natural effortless beauty is essential to make sure you're feeling yourself every single day and you're walking with that confident energy. I started oiling my hair once a week back when I was 15 and I had the longest, most loved luscious hair at my prom. Oil your hair with rosemary oil and ideally Indian amla oil. That's going to give you the best results. Put castor oil on your brows and your lashes every single night to get them to their maximum length. Gua sha your face regularly so you don't need to contour it. You'll already have the best facial structure. One thing that was a lifesaver in my morning school routine was that I would put two metal spoons in the fridge the night before when I went to sleep and in the morning they'd be cold. I'd take them out and put them under my eyes and it would de-puff them and kind of wake me up for the day. Then spend smarter with your makeup. Okay, the perfectly lip balm is essential. I currently use the Glossier Cherry lip balm. It gives you the perfect natural shade. It makes your lips look glossy and pop. Any lip tint like the Benefit Benny tint would work really well as well. My hack back in school was Vaseline. Like I would put Vaseline on my cheekbones for like a natural highlight. I'd also put it on a spoolie and comb it through my eyelashes because it would make them grow faster but it would also lift them so I was kind of wearing mascara without wearing mascara. Make sure you wear your SPF every single day. It makes your face look glowy but it'll also protect your skin and make sure that you're not aging fast like the rest of us. If you're gonna wear makeup, that tinted lip balm, a little bit of mascara, a touch of concealer and some brow gel will go a long way. And then when you're walking through the school halls, you wanna be smelling delicious. So of course, we gotta be showering every single day, ideally in the morning right before you go to school. And the key to get long lasting fragrance that lingers as you walk past people is moisturize with a scented lotion right as soon as you get out of the shower. Top that with a fragrant body oil. I like to use the one by Aveeno right now and then top off with your favorite perfume and you'll be smelling delicious all day long. Teenage acne is a struggle. I get it. I was there. And I found that during exam seasons, I would eat more sugar and more unhealthy food to help me cope with the stress. And that is actually the thing that was exacerbating all of my skin problems. As soon as I started cutting out sugar, my skin was clearer. But other than that, I would say do some research into what makeup you're using that is clogging your pores, same for your skincare products, and put together a very simple acne-friendly skincare routine. I went to the doctor and dermatologist many times as a teenager and they never helped. Healing my skin from the inside with the foods I was putting inside my body and the lifestyle I was living was a thing that really helped me. Another hack I used was turmeric face mask. This is an Indian secret to amazing glowing skin that will also help fade your acne marks. I'll put the recipe on the screen. Every summer before school, I didn't really have a life and I didn't have anything to do so I would use that time looking at YouTube tutorials on easy heatless hairstyles or natural no makeup makeup looks to make sure that getting ready in the morning every day was 10 times easier. I didn't even have to think when I woke up on a school morning because I knew Monday I'll do a side braid, Tuesday I'll do a high pony with like my bangs out. I was also a fashionista from a very young age and because I'm from England we have to wear uniforms at school and I hated it. I just felt kind of frumpy and it really impacted my confidence on a daily basis because I was like I don't even like what I'm wearing. So I did a few things to spice up my uniform. I always make sure that I'd get a nice school bag. I'd get like a nice big tote handbag. I would wear a cute pair of stud earrings every single day. I'd probably go for really mini gold hoops or pearl earrings. It just made me feel like a bougie bee. My watch and bracelets trend are a tradition that's been going on for ages. Just having that like by my school jumper just made me feel cuter and more stylish as well as having rings on my hands always. And the final step to the self-care chapter is drink your water girl. Staying hydrated is the key for boosted energy and motivation every single morning when you're waking up for school. Not to mention you must drink two to three liters of water daily to boost your metabolism, have a clear 
clearer, more focused and sharper mind, reduce puffiness, prevent acne, improve your mood, slow down aging, the list goes on. And did you know that staying hydrated has literally been linked to performing better at school? Studies have shown that students who drink more water have had better concentration and better short-term memory. I have something that's gonna make sure you stay on track with this. I wish I knew about this back when I was in school because I use it every single day now. And it's a brand called Water Drop. Essentially, it's these fun little cubes that you pop into a bottle or glass of water and it makes your water flavored. I'm talking peach flavor, cucumber flavor, raspberry, elderflower, the list goes on. The best part is that it's completely sugar-free and healthy for you. And Water Drop's bottles are designed to keep your cold drinks cold for up to 24 hours and your warm drinks warm for up to 12 hours. Perfect when you're stuck at school on a long day. They're completely sustainable and customizable if you check them out on the website. So if you are ready to glow up into your best self while also saving the environment by using Water Drop's products, then make sure you check out their website. It's linked below in the description. Chapter number two, mindset aka mastering your power and confidence at school. Point number one, everyone is an effing weirdo. And it's so annoying because the popular cliques start to form and all of these people start putting on a front like they're better than you the way they walk through the school halls thinking that because they go to house parties every single weekend, they are above you. But guess what? No matter how many friends they have, how attractive they are, what kind of a big house they live in, how cool they are, even if they have the most latest expensive things, Everyone is fighting their own internal battles every single day. Every single person in that school fears what other people think of them. The only people that don't are the people like you who sit on YouTube and watch self-development videos so that you can step into the best version of yourself. But I guarantee you, the people that are so concerned with being in the popular cliques and going to all of the parties, they don't care about that. They are constantly trying to impress other people. Do you really want to be like that? Listen, everyone has a very fragile ego in school, so trust me, literally no one is better than you. And I'm not just making this up out of thin air, okay? I remember sitting in front of one of the most popular girls in my school year in class, and I overheard her conversation to one of her guy friends dreading the fact that we had a non-uniform day coming up, right? And this is when everyone can come in wearing their own clothes. And she was saying she didn't want to come into school because everyone would judge her and what she was wearing. And I remember sitting there and I was like, what do these people are insecure when other people want to be their friend and be as pretty as them? So I literally turned around to her and I was like, why are you dreading it? Like, is it that serious? And she goes, yeah, she was like, it's judgment day and everyone's going to have an opinion about your outfit and who is the best dressed. And I was sitting there like, do people actually care about this? And it just goes to show if you focus on growing your character and bettering yourself on a daily basis, your mind will become so strong and so powerful that no one else will even come close. Point number two, the people that have the most to say are the people that are hurting the most. When people try to make fun of you, start rumors, always have an opinion, speak behind people's backs, they're very argumentative, etc. They are in such a negative place in their life. I guarantee you, like I will literally put money on this because I know this for a fact, those people either have a very bad home life or extremely low self-esteem. Because guess what? Happy people aren't mean and they don't try to put other people down. Whenever people tried saying things to me or making fun of me in high school, I used to take it personally. Thinking, oh, if only I was this or only I was that or I was better dressed or better looking, then people wouldn't treat me this way. No absolutely false. Those mean kids are actually just really going through it and projecting on people any chance they get. They will observe their peers and try to find reasons as to why they're better than them to justify their own existence and feel better about their insecurities. Take a second to think about that. Literally, what a sad existence and you're out here taking it personally, acting like they're speaking the truth. So this school year, if anyone is trying to be rude to you, don't try and fight back. Don't be hurt by it. Don't take their words for truth. Instead, empathize. Don't say anything, okay? Sit there and smile or be like, okay. You're completely unbothered because in your head, you're sitting there and you know that person must really be going through it to even conjure up that thought about me. Oh, like wish them well. Point three, the most popular people that host all of the parties are the most attractive, get into relationships before everyone else. Do not keep their status of popularity post high school. Because once you leave and you go to college, university, you start a job, whatever, you start at zero again because you're in the real world in a different environment surrounded by different people. The only people that have an advantage in your post-school life is the people that worked extra hard on their self-development throughout school. If you've worked on your discipline, mastering your confidence, setting out your goals, 
and growing your self-love, you're already ahead of and better than 90% of adults. I'm not joking when I say I would come home from school every single day, get my homework done ASAP, and I would go on YouTube and I would search advice and anything I didn't like about myself, I would start working on it. No other teenager does that because they're constantly chasing the approval of their peers. What a waste of time. You're not even gonna see those people after a few years. Point four, show up with love and light every single day. I made the mistake of being the shy, unproblematic student sitting at the back of the class, just quietly getting her work done, not talking to anyone, never being social. Instead, I should have shown up every single day wanting to talk to people, literally anyone that I was sitting next to, asking them, how was their summer? What are you doing this weekend? What are you into? How did you find that class? Oh, have you joined that club? How are you finding it? AKA conversational skills. That is gonna last you a lifetime. It's very simple to master. It starts with just asking one of those basic questions and the benefits you get from it are endless people are the game you always want to be on good terms with everyone never be that person that's going around spreading secrets that you found out engaging in rumors talking behind other people's backs confiding in someone saying how you don't like another student because it's going to come back to bite you in the ass you don't know that if in 10 years one of your peers might be super successful in a field that you want to work in if you were the nice sociable bubbly girl that spoke to everyone and was always polite and respectful you can network with them networking is everything it's going to get you so so far in life and it starts in school even if you don't like someone obviously don't be their bestie never be fake don't force conversation with someone that you're not a fan of but always be polite and respectful to everyone okay you need to learn your manners in order to actually become a good person and develop your character point five if you think that you are not enough fake it till you make it i didn't start doing this until i just started university and it changed my life forever i just pretended and i embodied the characteristics that i wanted to have until they naturally became a part of me i was so shy and literally terrified of social interaction but after years of being the quiet girl in school i had had enough and in university although i was still so scared on the inside when talking to a new person i just didn't show it i was screaming on the inside but i was like and how is that and this and this and, blah, 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 blah. and just faking a whole conversation no one figured it out and i made so many friends after a couple of weeks i became naturally extroverted when i had been an introvert for the last 18 years of my life so that's a reminder that you can become anybody you want to be never let your past hold you back i don't care what you were like in your previous school year you can recreate yourself into anything this year step six have an abundance mindset we are not going into the limited time we have this school year putting limits on ourselves thinking oh maybe i should just you know aim for a c or a b because you know i probably won't get an a no 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 i spent the first few years of school constantly getting b's and c's like constantly and i felt like i kept trying and i just couldn't do it and i couldn't do it and i told myself in my final year of school when i take my final exams and those grades stick with me for life i am aiming for straight a's and nothing less i finished school with straight a's because i reprogrammed my subconscious and i was constantly affirming to myself every single day that when i get that piece of paper when i leave school all I'm gonna see is A's. I told myself I was actually capable of doing it even though throughout school I had actually really struggled with tests and studying. Of course that goes hand in hand with actually doing the work every single day, every single weekend. Sometimes I would even wake up at 6 a.m. to start studying on a Saturday but that self-belief takes you a long way. Point number seven, school is not the best years of your life and you will never see those people ever again. How freeing is that? That means no matter what embarrassing thing you did, no matter how other people perceive you, that image is not gonna stay with you for the rest of your life. And if people in school just aren't your people and they have a problem with who you are, wait it out and focus on yourself because you're gonna go out into the big wide world and there are gonna be so many people who just love you to pieces and choose you and love every single bit of what makes you you. School is not the be all or end all and defines how the rest of your life is gonna go. Point number eight, your friendship circle will change and people will fall out and it's all actually very normal and good for you. Throughout high school, people are gonna change and grow into their adult selves. It's a very rapidly transformative time. So there's a really big fat chance that you're not gonna align with everyone that you did last year. If you can master this at your young age as a teenager, then you are golden for the rest of your life and it's this. Once you recognize that you and another person just don't match anymore and you notice that and then you leave to start focusing on yourself and expanding your horizons by introducing yourself to 
other people, that is the smartest thing you can do for yourself because most people fall into a very comfortable trap or they're scared of eating lunch alone or they're scared of shifting between friendship groups and it holds them back in life because they're constantly surrounding themselves with people that they have outgrown and are no longer benefiting them in any way. Every single time that I have left a friendship group, no matter how awkward the transition period felt, I always found something better afterwards. And thank God I did, because if I was still friends with the people I was in school, I definitely would not be where I am right now. Point number nine, high school drama is very real and my God, is there a lot of it. Most people in high school are extremely fake, two-faced and problematic. Everyone's got raging hormones and is going through puberty and they simply just can't help it. Now, all I'm gonna say for you is refer back to my other point about showing up with love and light every single day, okay? I want you to prioritize being a good person. This is the point in your life where you're forming the habits that you're gonna take into your adult life and being a good person should be at the center of that. And lastly, point number 10. You will be so grateful about your single era during high school. I never dated during high school, mostly because no boys liked me. That's okay. And to be completely honest, I wanted to have a boyfriend. I wanted a date. I thought that would make me cool. I thought that was the typical high school experience. And for a lot of people it is. When I look back now, I'm like, thank you universe. Thank you for not setting me up with one of these dusty boys from high school. I am so glad that no one from my school can say I'm their ex. I did myself a good one there. You will be so grateful that you did not associate yourself with those high school boys. Trust me, they are not it. Their priorities are never straight. They cannot offer you anything special other than the bare minimum, if that. You are doing yourself a huge disservice by chasing them. Save yourself the time and the emotion and focus on things that are actually gonna get you that long-term gain. Chapter number three, studying. This is a cute chapter and it's gonna get so nostalgic for me because I was a good student, okay? In my last two years of school, I actually like put my head down and I like fully learned how to study. I became a teacher's pet. I was answering every single question right in class. So I'm about to dish out all of my favorite tips. One, romanticize. Studying can get very boring, okay? The reason that we don't do it and we procrastinate is because it's such a tedious task and it's just gross. It's like, I wanna watch TV, I wanna hang out with my friends. I totally get it. Romanticizing a lifestyle of studying for the next few months or for that school year saved me so much and made sure that I was putting in the work to get the best grades. I literally go on YouTube, type in real-time study with me, study YouTubers, organize my workspace or stationery with me. I would watch these before I started my studying. I'd spend like 20 minutes watching this. It gave me such a surge of motivation. Like, yes, I wanna be like them. You go from your six hours at school where everyone's messing around, talking, slacking off, and then you come home and you're gonna get all of that out of your head and instead you're gonna spend 20 minutes watching TikToks or YouTube videos or Instagram reels of other people putting in the work to study and then you're gonna normalize that behavior in your brain. Step number two, your homework and any of the work tasks you're given from school, you're gonna do it the day you get it. This is so you stay on top of everything and you're not overwhelmed by like one day of trying to tackle a week's worth of work. Now this is a practice that I recently learned in the book Atomic Habits by James Clear and this is one of the most popular self-help books of all time because of this system that he's created to make sure that people create habits and actually stick to them and when I read this I realized I was doing it in school without even realizing it. Now James Clear talks about the process of being able to stick to a habit by making it attractive, making it obvious, making it satisfying. And I was doing this with my homework and all of my schoolwork. I would come home from school at 3.30 p.m. and I would immediately get changed, rush into my room and do my homework. And I would kind of time block it so there were no breaks, there was no procrastination. By 5 p.m. I had to do all of my homework and all of my schoolwork. Do you know why I was motivated to get it done straight away? Because I told myself if I get it done by 5 p.m. I have the rest of the evening. I have another five hours of the day well I can do whatever I want I can see my friends one of my favorite things to do was I would watch movies all day and I'd have chocolate chip cookies and milk if you have a day where you have a lot of stuff to do make sure that in the evening there's something exciting that you enjoy scheduled and you'll get through that work a lot faster step number three organization is everything I'm at a point in my life now where I can't live without my calendar everything is color-coded and time blocked and same goes with school okay back then I used to have a planner so every single day I'd fill out what my to-do list was what homework I needed to get done what I could do to try and get ahead of my classes how I could revise and study to make sure I'm prepped for tests before the teacher even assigns as that task I was that much of a nerd and it really paid off one the Pomodoro technique I've been using this since I was about 16 
go on to pomodoro.com. This is a proven productivity hack. So it's a 20 minute timer. You study for 20 minutes and you take a five minute break and 20 minutes and five minute break. And it basically ensures that you're not procrastinating and that your energy and focus is fully channeled into whatever work you're doing. I would have a separate folder for every single subject. I'd have all of the homework in there, all of the papers and tasks that the teachers assigned us. And then I would go online onto the school website or the examination website. And I would download the assessment criteria and I'd print it off. And I would download the specifications so this would outline everything you needed to achieve in the subject and then I would outline past examination papers and I'd print all of this off and keep it in each folder I'd go through and highlight all of the necessary information so I understood the requirements of each subject inside and out so I knew how to efficiently study for the rest of the year and what I really needed to know to pass the subject and what I didn't really need to study and waste my time on studying with past exam papers put me ahead of the curve because I learned how examiners wrote questions and it taught me the strategy of how to write in an exam succeeding in school isn't just about memorizing the material that you're given by your teachers but also learning the techniques of completing an examination efficiently and successfully. The next step is about self-discipline. Right now I'm at a place in my life where my favorite way to practice self-discipline is doing something I hate every single day. Once you do this, self-discipline is just a natural habit to you. For example, I wake up first thing in the morning and as much as I wanna stay in my cozy bed, I force myself to go to the gym. Although it feels icky in the moment, I step out of the gym and I'm like, oh my God, I did it. That means I can do anything else I put my mind to. Next step is take advantage of every resource that is around you. You are at a huge advantage because you're getting everything for free right now. So be a teacher's pet, okay? Then after class, you can ask them specific questions about the exam. Ask them for extra advice that they're not just giving out to everyone. Go to the clubs that your school offers to have those extracurricular activities written on your CV or your resume because it's really gonna help you the second you leave school and if you don't have a lot of work or life experience, those clubs are gonna help you so much and also they're gonna help you make friends because they're social. They're also gonna teach you about yourself. They're gonna allow you to grow and have a hobby and also teach you about your likes and dislikes. In fact, they might even form your life plan. If you go to a club and you're like, oh, you know, I like these elements or I don't really like these elements, it can help you create a clear idea of what kind of career you want to have. And the last step is to speak out in class. I know, I know, it's so scary. And I didn't do it for my first three years of school. I was just like, I know the answer, but I'm not gonna put my hand up because what if I get it wrong? What if people laugh at me? That's embarrassing, that's weird. Listen, speaking out in class does wonders for your confidence long-term. Not only that, but it solidifies the info that you're learning about and it makes you fall in love with studying. It's another step to romanticizing the entire school and class experience. Everyone is scared of putting up their hand and saying the answer in case they get it wrong and look stupid. Life is never that deep. And like I always say, embrace your fear of being cringe and being embarrassing and just do the thing. Because let's say you do get it wrong and let's say a few people chuckle at the fact that you got it wrong. You do that a couple of times and you become numb to it. This is a practice called exposure therapy. Chapter four, your lifestyle. We're talking about hobbies. We're talking about your home life, your friends, your weekends. Step number one, make memories. I know a lot of the stuff I've talked about in this video is about being a high achiever and trying to get ahead and like doing your future self a favor and that is very important but also it's so important to have fun in the moment because yeah school are not the best years of your life but also you're never going to get these years back and it's really important to try and enjoy them and me and my few friends like we used to take all of these silly little videos and in the moment it felt like nothing those videos date back to 2014 it's almost 10 years later and I still have those videos in my iPhone. I cannot tell you the amount of like nostalgia and comfort and joy that it brings me just watching those few like 15 second videos. And it's so nice to watch how far I've come. Two treat yourself okay your mental health should always be a priority especially at a difficult time like school okay where you're juggling growing into the next version of yourself getting comfortable with your the way your body is changing your appearance friendship drama getting annoyed with your parents trying to fight to have more freedom i get it and so in those times, you've got to be gentle with yourself. I'm such a big believer in always pushing yourself to strive for big things and like prove to yourself that you can always do better, but don't take it to the point where you're not resting and you're not treating yourself and you're not taking your weekends to yourself because rest is equally as important in being productive. Three, don't underestimate the importance of your sleep schedule, okay? If you can master going to sleep and waking up at the same time every single day, you are golden, okay? So many of us adults are out here trying to master that practice and struggling. 
set the habit now, okay? Especially when you're in school and you're literally forced to wake up at 7, 8 a.m. On Saturdays and Sundays, also wake up at 7, 8 a.m. I get it, you're tired, you're a teenager, you wanna lay in bed until midday. I did that every single weekend, okay? And I do regret it because I think I could have gotten so much more out of my time. I know so many of you are teenagers and you comment on my videos and you're like, oh, I wanna get ahead in life or I don't have money or I don't have this or that. Your weekends, if you just woke up a little bit earlier, what if you go online and you set up a blog? I did that when I was in school. What if you set up a YouTube channel? I set up my first YouTube channel, which is now deleted. This is my second one. Uh, when I was 14 years old and I did it for a year. I had like 300 subscribers and I got no views. But guys, look at where I am right now. Because I practiced doing the YouTube thing when I was younger. Step number four, your morning routine starts the night before. This was my favorite hack in my school days. So I was not a morning person in the slightest. So I tried to make my life as easy as possible. When I was going to sleep the night before, I would lay out my uniform. I'd make sure that it was all ironed and it was laid in like the order that I'd put each item of clothing on. And then on my vanity, I would put each of my makeup products in order. So like my moisturizer and my concealer and my brush and do it all in a line. So I didn't even have to open my drawers or look for anything in the morning. I would have either meal prepped or already planned in my head what I was gonna have for breakfast in the morning and I would have already packed my school bag. The next step is to value your support system. Make sure that you have a good group of friends because being a teenager is hard and you wanna have reliable people that you can talk to and you can trust. Hell, it could even be your siblings, it could be your mum. This is why it's so important to step out of your shell and talk to people at school because you never know what you're gonna find and like you could actually make a best friend for life. And the last step for the lifestyle chapter is put yourself First, yes, you need to focus on your studies. You need to balance having a social life and like having people to love and care about in your life. But ultimately, we are focused on our self-development. This is one thing I can say I mastered when I was 14, 15 years old and it has done me wonders in getting me to the place that I am in now. Pick up a book to learn something new. Try learning a new language in your spare time. Pick up a hobby. Do something for yourself and the benefit of your future self this week. Do something that's just gonna bring you joy. Even if it's going on a 20 minute walk and treating yourself to your favorite milkshake. What happy moment. Focus on your self love and your self growth. Unfortunately, it took me until I was 20 years old to start putting myself first and actually loving myself and building the relationship I had with myself. And had I done that earlier, then I wouldn't have to experience constantly letting other people walk over me, letting other people take advantage of me, getting too overly attached to boys and dating. And chapter five, you know I had to give the homework chapter for a back to school video. Let's go. Step number one. One, start your glow up routine people okay school is right around the corner we want to start exercising okay not because you have to lose any weight not because your body has to look a certain way so your mental health can be perfect homework task number two watch my confidence video if you are a teenager and you are here and you have not watched that oh my god it's gonna do wonders for you homework task number three find your inspiration okay we are not looking at school as an icky boring task you know why because we have to do it so why are we gonna waste time complaining about it watch a movie or a tv show that romanticizes school and makes you like fall in love with it i used to do that all the time find study tubers watch tiktoks of people studying homework task number four practice your newfound conversational skills if you want to start faking it till you make it before you get to school when you're out at a coffee shop or you're walking on the street and like you have a friendly stranger who's like walking their dog just say hello and walk past that used to be something that was so terrifying for me force yourself to do it in the moment start familiarizing yourself with the concept of making conversation with your siblings friends or friends of your friends or distant family members homework task number five do something now you can choose either one that's going to benefit your future self maybe it's picking up a hobby early maybe it's getting your school plan in order and how you're going to make this year the best academic year of your life or do something that's going to make you happy this week just prioritize your mental health have a little bit of fun and that brings us to the end of this video oh i actually loved making this video i feel like it healed a little part of me thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you if you're new here make sure you subscribe and check out my other videos because they all kind of give this vibe check out my tiktok for bite-sized information videos every single week and my podcast which is linked below in the description i appreciate you thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one bye